Hello guys, my name is Alex Gomez and on today's video I'm going to show you my PVR texturing lighting workflow in Blender. Yeah, I'm switching from Maya to Blender and it's been amazing. It was quite difficult in the beginning, but now I'm getting used to it. So also you can grab the assets in the link below in my ArtStation store for free. So you can, fo you can follow through the tutorial with me. If you want more videos like this, tutorials, uh, sculpting processes, tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I post a video every week. Okay guys, so uh, these uh, PVR textures, I made them in Substance Painter. So they're already done, so I have uh, four different maps. That is the, the uh, base color. I have the roughness, metallic and normal map. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna create a new material in Blender and I'm gonna assign it to the head. And once I have this new material, I know like I'm not, I'm very new at Blender, I'm transitioning from Maya to Blender. So just bear with me in this one. Okay, so anyways, after I assign the material, I'm just gonna bring the file. I know that there's a window there that you can change and, and browse your files um, right in that area. So I'm just going to <clears throat> look for my I think I'm gonna start with the base color of the head and I have all all of them named and you can find them here uh, in the uh, description in the link below and you can uh, find all the files and all the the blender files and the texture files so you can just uh, go with me and, and follow this process so yeah so I'm just gonna bring the base color I'm gonna be the metallic I'm gonna bring the, um, the roughness and normal. So in this one, base color goes to the base color. Note, pretty straightforward. Metallic goes to metallic, straightforward. I don't change uh, pretty much anything. The only thing that I change, if it is when I bring the either the metallic of the roughness map, I change uh, the color space. The color space makes sure that it has to be in raw. No, as RGB because if it's uh, as RGB, your uh, texture map is gonna be uh, or washed out. And when I get the the normal map, I create a vector map node and I connect my file to a vector map node and the vector map node to the normal. So you see here, and that's all I touch. I don't touch any other settings. So now what I'm going to do is uh, click that uh, material icon and I'm gonna drop it to the eyes. Uh, when I drop it to the eyes, it's gonna kinda, kinda like create kind of like a duplicate, an instance, but if I click the number two right there, it's gonna create its own material. And that kind of like a, it duplicates the material, the, the instance material, and it duplicates with all the maps, which I'm gonna change them. So I don't have to, every time that I'm creating a new material, I have to change create a new file, uh, image file, image file, image file, vector node is gonna be array there. So I'm gonna change the colors. I think I did a, a mistake right here where I changed the raw material to, to the eyes, uh, not sorry, to the eyes, not to the head. And um, I went back. Okay, so sorry about that, now I'm gonna went back and I'm gonna do it again. So I'm just gonna apply the materials, uh, bring them the maps, kind of like replace the files pretty much uh, to the ice materials. And I'm gonna do the same with all the maps. I'm gonna do with the roughness, metallic, normal, and base color. And so on for every single material. So make sure, remember that you drag and drop the material icon where it says head or whatever is the name. Drag and drop it to the object that you want to apply the material so that uh, there is a chill icon that is going to show you a number a number two and make sure that click that so the instance becomes its own material and then you can just replace the the material so it's very it's very simple much better so you're gonna see I just drop drop the material select the object then I'm gonna click change the, uh, I'm not going to change the name yet, I'm going to click the number two right there and now it's going to create a new uh, a new material, it's not an instance anymore, it's a material and then I change the name and replace 
the, the texture maps. So yeah, this is, a, this is a little bit new for me, Blender. I'm trying to get into it and learning a little bit more every day. And uh, it's pretty powerful software. It's very different than Maya. It's kind of like you have to forget that you know 3D in order to learn learn Blender pretty much. It's just kind of like the interface and is mostly like the stuff that how it works, the keys and how materials works and how lights. No, 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 pretty much how lights work, but kind of like uh, the way how, how you move around in Blender. It's kind of like a, the part that I find difficulty, but I've been learning so much. For example, I didn't know that, and I was just creating like files and files and files instead of duplicating the shader and just bring it and just replacing the the texture maps. Because in in Maya, you can just pretty much go to the hyper shade and duplicate the shader and apply it whatever. So it's a pretty much a straightforward, but you know like. It's all about like a, kind of like a tips and tricks that you can find online for sure for this. So I'm going to do this, this the same process for um, the stitches, the pants and the turtleneck. I'm going to speed up the, the video so we can get into the lighting part. Yeah, so don't don't be afraid to try Blender. I'm trying to Blender. I know it's getting like so much force lately, so much power. So everyone is uh, in the Blender train, I guess. So I don't want to be behind that. And it's free. That's the other thing. Like uh, for freelancers and artists like like me, like paying like two uh, two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars Canadian, let's say, for the Maya license is just too much. It's it's a lot of money. So. We have a free software, might as well buy add-ons. Okay, so now we're gonna start with lighting. This is one of my favorite parts of the whole process. I love lighting. I've been a lighter compositor for a, quite a few years. No, a few years, probably like 10 years, all right? So what I'm gonna do is gonna do a studio lighting, kind of like a three-point light for this character. I did this character already in Maya, the lighting and the setup. So I'm just gonna kind of like um, replicated in Blender and I pretty much know where my lights are gonna be and um, and kind of like the values, the values are a little bit different it all depends what uh, render aid engine are you using and um, I my normally my, my render engine that I to go is uh, Redshift, I love Redshift, it's so fast, it's unbelievable, amazing and way better than Cycles, GPU or if like it's just like the results are are really 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 fast so I'm gonna do kind of like a backdrop there so this is gonna give some bounce lights to my, my character and then after after I add um, the lights I'm gonna add some material to it so first I have to add a camera I think I have I already set it up the camera so that's the camera there and for the camera the focal length I always set it up to 7880. I think something uh, shorter than that or is more value, uh, a smaller value is gonna start distorting your uh, your characters. So the other thing about lighting I use mostly, I use uh, um, area lights. That's my to-go lights. Uh, you have so much control that you can change size, you can change the shape. Like for example, for a character like that that doesn't have too much reflection, I use uh, rectangular lights. When I do like a stylized character, I like to use um, uh, circle lights because it gives a really nice uh, reflection to the pupils. So I'm gonna set up first my my key light, but pretty much this is not as much as my key light. It's kind of like a fill light in this way. I put my, my most intensive light, uh, kind of like as a backlight, as a rim light. So uh, because I this character is a little bit creepy, kind of like Tim Horton, eh, Tim Hortons, eh, so Canadian, Tim Burton, kind of like style. So I wanted to to give like that kind of like a darkish um, theme or darkish uh, tone of it. So that's why this this is my 
key light by non necessary so my key light is going to be one in the in the coming from the side and back so yeah so i just want to mention again hopefully you guys uh, download uh, the files the, i'm going to give you the blender files and the texture files so you can just uh, follow along with me with this video watch it pause it and and if you ha guys have any questions just throw it back to me so i'm using this for this one but i normally use uh, depends depends on the character i use this code i used uh, uh, rectangular lights and it changed the colors pretty much so for um, for the side ones i always get like one from the side blue and one from the other side like a warm tone like like a yellowish not too much not too, not, not too much it's just a tint a tint is enough to to give that little bit blue when you put too much like a color of a light it's just gonna destroy the values of your of your whole composition of, of the character And then I'm gonna create my rim light or backlight. So that's the one that is gonna come behind the character and is gonna give you a really, really nice uh, rim. Yeah, like like shiny around around the character. And I, you, that's one of the lights that I use the most and I really love is because it, it, it kind of like brings up the character and separates the character from the background. So as you can see here, I'm adding the light, but it's not strong enough. So I'm just gonna put the power up and I'm gonna change the shape to circular. And now you can see, just put it like, and, and you're gonna start seeing the side of the character. It, it just separated from the, car, the from the background. I really love the, the rim lights and I work a, a lot with rim lights. Those ones are one of my favorite to kind of like a pop out the character and give it like a more, you know, like, more uh, uh, contrast per se and also I change I change the color a, a bit okay so now that I have uh, kind of like my light setup I'm gonna change the the color of the of the background so what I do I just put the roughness up I still like giving some specularity but so it kind of like reflects but I'm not as much I'm just checking that I have everything in order. I don't change uh, any values per se here at all. Once I put the, my texture files to to the files that they should be like, you know, roughness to roughness, pretty straightforward, metallic to metallic. And the only thing that I check is that, that my uh, color space is uh, sRGB from, uh, it's not sRGB, it's raw for my, for my, metallic and roughness and now you can see that the character is kind of like getting more more to life so yeah i decided to make these tutorials because a lot of you have asked me if i can kind of like create a, a pvr rendering or a pvr workflow and also a, a lighting setup so pretty much this is what i do with my characters i do a, a studio lighting and this is how it's looking this is how it's looking my character and i'm kind of like i start moving a little bit the lights i doing a little bit tweaks there and just to just just to get it like the way i want it and make sure you always kind of like play with color palettes there is a, a website adobe adobe palettes i think it is but you can just pick uh, so many different color palettes that you can choose and create your scene based on, on those color palettes because they're a combination of colors that is just like a so complementary that they just like it, it matches so much and uh, it, it makes your real renders look look beautiful per se I, I just I, I love rendering this is one of besides uh, sculpting and, and modeling this is, this is my, my favorite favorite um, part of the of the process is lighting and here we go we have a, our guy here so yeah there's uh, some problems that i found i don't know why it kind of like shows the seams of my uvs even though i have a triplanar projection uh, uh, uvs in, in in substance painter it doesn't happen to me this problem in maya if you guys know like uh, what is going on here in blender why my my, my uvs are kind of like a uh, 
are uh, showing that way uh, please let me know I don't understand why it's happening it doesn't happen in Maya but anyways thank you so much for watching and if you like this video please subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell and don't forget to watch blocking out an stylized character and whether or not you should go to art or animation school take care guys and keep creating